Welcome to the Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health Podcast. I'm Maya Ratla, medical astrologist, astro herbalist, and green witch. I was diagnosed with endometriosis at 19, and I was told I would never have children. I healed my body through the power of herbs, alternative health practitioners, energy healing, and more. At 28, I had the baby they said I would never have without any interventions. I refused to believe that my body was not able to heal itself. Along this journey, I stumbled across medical astrology, and it resonated with me so much. I started down the path to learning this unique system that had been used for thousands of years in the medical community. I now help other women heal their bodies using their cosmic blueprint, the unique blueprint that every person has embedded in their DNA from the stars. This system helps me see what's going on in your body on a cosmic level and exactly how to help you give your body what it needs to heal itself. We are all uniquely and amazingly designed, and when we learn to work with our design, love ourselves for how we are designed to function, and integrate the cosmos into our lives, I truly believe that we can see true and lasting health brought into our lives. If you are ready to change your life, heal your body, and learn to deeply love who you are, this podcast is for you. Come join me as I discuss medical astrology, astro nutrition, astro herbalism, health, wellness, spirituality, transformation, and so much more. I'm so excited you are joining me. I know, I know, I know. You are sick of me telling you to drink water and take electrolytes. But let me tell you, it's totally worth it. This is why I love Element so much, though. It's because they are science-backed. They're formulated to contain just the right amount of sodium, potassium, magnesium to ensure that all of that water that I encourage you to drink on a daily basis in pretty much every episode is going to go where it needs to. It's going to stay there, right? There is no point in drinking so much water daily if you're just going to pee most of it right back out. No one wants to be living in the bathroom. I'm sure that less time in the bathroom is definitely a plus there. And if you have been wanting to check out Element, I have a good news for you. I actually have a referral link now that you can use to purchase Element through. And in doing so, you receive a free sample pack with your first order through that link. This only applies to the first order currently, but hey, free is free. Am I right? So if you are ready to up your hydration game, keep that gallon of water I am making you drink daily inside your body, click that referral link in the show notes and go snatch you up some element today. My favorite flavors are raspberry salt, citrus salt, and the chocolate salt. So they have a chocolate mint that is delicious and it goes really great with a protein shake, a chocolate protein shake. After I've had a really hard workout, it helps replenish me. It gives me all the potassium, sodium, and magnesium that I just sweated out back, as well as tasting delicious. It's great in hot chocolate and coffee as well. So perfect times. They are great for cold weather mainly. I do not like them as much in the summer, the chocolate ones, but the other ones are great. You can add a dash of sweet and salty to your favorite warm beverage. So go now to the link, get your free sample pack of Element today with your first order. Enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it because it's my absolute fucking favorite uh, electrolyte brand. And that's that. Back to your regularly scheduled program. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health. I'm Ayer, I'm your host, and let's get going. Today, we are discussing Chiron in medical astrology. This is one of the only asteroids that I work with personally, um, usually. There are a few others that some other medical astrologists may work with in their own practice, but this is the one that I find that I like the most, and it just resonates more, and so that's what we use. And we're going to dive into Chiron today. So Chiron is not technically a planet. It's more like a comet, a planetoid, an asteroid, whatever you want to consider it. It's kind of considered all of those things, um, depending on who you're talking to. It moves between Saturn and Uranus in the sky, and it was discovered in 1977. His placement in the chart indicates our sacred wound, a quote-unquote weak spot in either our body or our psyche. Okay, there are some interesting dynamics surrounding Chiron as well. In astronomy, he is neither a full-on planet, but not necessarily an asteroid either. Some say Chiron is a comet that got caught in the gravitational force of our sun. Others simply say it's a planetoid. But the most interesting fact about him is his orbital path that takes him between Saturn and Uranus. So he moves between the visible 
and the invisible planets at, and as such the visible and invisible realms right we see this meaning that to heal completely we must access the invisible realms to heal ourselves in the physical and visible realm chiron is then seen as a bridge between the seen and the unseen the light and the dark the spiritual and the material worlds as far as symbolism it is the symbol of the wounded healer it was discovered during a time where the natural healing slash alternative health slash, ind slash indigenous and traditional medicine was really coming back to the forefront of the collective Chiron also symbolizes, like I mentioned earlier, the sacred wound, right? That's the deepest wound in our spirit that affects every area of our lives. It's also considered a teacher. It teaches us that this wound actually contains medicine within it, and we need to shift our perspective of it to reveal that the wound is actually a blessing and a gift. And when we realize that, we are able to heal that wound and then in turn heal that same wound in others as well. It is also a symbol of alchemy in many ways, right? Alchemy is taking something and transforming it into something else. And in medical astrology and astroherbalism, we see that meaning to transform a plant from just the physical form that we see to a ingestible form that in the form of like a spagyric tincture, that contains the mind, body, and spirit of the plant, so it in turn can heal the mind, body, and spirit of whoever's ingesting it, right? So the thing here is the difference between poison and medicine truly is the dosage. The most toxic substances in the universe can become powerful medicines for healing when they're dosed correctly by skilled people that are trained in how to do so, right? We see this in the use of digoxin for cardiac dysrhythmias. This was actually synthesized from the deadly plant foxglove. If you ingest foxglove by itself in a tea and a tincture and whatever, right? Just go out and munch on some of it. You will more than likely die. Um, it's very deadly very quickly. And it actually causes a deadly arrhythmia to start in the heart that then will kill you because your heart stops functioning properly and blood doesn't circulate and lack of oxygen to the brain shuts it off and then eventually that dysrhythmia will cause the heart to stop pumping as well so either way it results in death but 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 when you turn it into digoxin and you dose it in very small minute doses it actually can stop an arrhythmia we used digoxin for afib patients the majority of the time that I've ever given it as a nurse, it was given for AFib. So atrial fibrillation is where the atria, the top chambers of the heart, are fibrillating, which means they're kind of just fluttering around and not pumping correctly. They're not doing like a full squeeze, right? And when you give digoxin, it actually causes that AFib to stop, right? And so the pumping action is increased but you give it in really really minute doses like i mean 0 0.125 micrograms like that is an insanely small dose. these are the tiniest pills i have ever given in my life so it actually does in the form of medicine the opposite of what it does in the form of a poison so in this way we see the poison becoming medicine which is the definition of alchemy and this is what chiron symbolizes right it symbolizes the poison, or what we think is a poison inside of us that we then transform, we alchemize, and we turn it into medicine to help ourselves and to help others. When we carry a wound, a trauma, an abuse that happened to us inside of us, it strikes the core of ourselves. It only stays a wound, right, when we view and perceive it as such. If we wallow in the victim mindset, if we allow it to have power over us, if we constantly are thinking about how we had no power in that situation it stays a wound when we shift our perspective our perspective right and we shift that perception of it being something that happened to us we see it in a new light and then that's when we come to understand that the universe spirit source god whatever you want to call it put that trauma or that wound into our lives for a reason 
we can see that it's there to teach us something, then we are able to shift that perspective on the most fragile part of ourselves. We see it crack open, right, like a seed that is ready to sprout, and we can transform that into our power, our strength, and our unique gift in medicine that we have to give to the world. To heal others, we must truly heal ourselves first. In my life, I have seen this work that I do and the help that I provide for others really propel me forward into, into a different way of being. My Chiron is in Gemini, and this means that my deepest wound is in like my speech, my way of communicating, my being heard or feeling like I'm being heard, truly listened to, right? Gemini rules speech, it rules communication, it's ruled by Mercury, which rules the same. And so I feel many, many, many times that no one really wants to hear what I have to say and that it's really not even worth putting out there into the universe because like, why? What I have to say doesn't matter. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody gives a fuck about what I'm talking about, right? And the reason I still, even at my age now, feel this way many, many times was this was confirmed over and over to me as a child. I was constantly told to be quiet, to stop talking. I was being too much, too loud. No one wanted to hear what I was saying. Why did I have to be so gregarious? Why was I always talking about stuff? Why, 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 why are you constantly, you know, being so talkative about things? Why are you so boisterous? Stop using your hands when you're talking. You know, why can't you just sit still and, you know, have a conversation without throwing your hands around all wild? Y'all can't see me because this is the podcast, but even when I'm taping the podcast, I still use my hands to talk. Like anybody who knows me knows they better stand like arm's length away from me because my hands are going to be flying while I'm talking. It's just in my nature and it's something I have never, ever been able to like stop doing. And this, all that, right, outside influence kept me from sharing all that I wanted to for way too long. Because knowing this from my childhood and everyone saying this to me, why would anyone want to hear what I was saying? Why would anyone even listen to me? Nobody growing up wanted to hear what I had to say. No one wanted to hear the, you know, the information that I had discovered or the the newest thing that I wanted to talk about, my newest hyper focus, if you will, right? When I was 10, though, I had a small transformation in this matter that really helped. I met a deaf man named John. He had been a longtime family friend, but he lived pretty far away, so we didn't see him very often. My grandparents had known him for years. He had been in their lives for a number of years. But because we didn't live right next to my grandparents, lived in a different state, we didn't see them all the time, so we weren't, um, I wasn't personally like, uh, in communication with this uh, friend or I'd seen him very often. We went to visit my grandparents one year and he happened to show up at my grandparents' house during one of the visits. He could read lips fairly decently, but obviously someone speaking in his language, American Sign Language, was preferable. And I knew not a single lick of ASL, American Sign Language. Uh, I did seem to feel like a sadness radiating off of him, right? Because he wasn't able to fully participate in the conversations around him. Um, He could read our lips and see what we were saying, but responding required him to write things down. And so that took time, right? And it was difficult for him to really fully participate. And I just felt like that wasn't acceptable, (laughs) And so I took a pen and a paper and I walked over him and I wrote, you know, hi, my name is Ayer. I would love if you would teach me some sign language so I could talk to you. And his eyes lit up, y'all, and teach me he did. Like, oh my God, (laughs) he was so excited. And that was it. That was the start of me learning ASL, American Sign Language, and becoming an interpreter. Talking with my hands made sense, finally. My energy, my facial expressions, and my boisterous was not only a good thing when translating, but highly welcomed by the deaf community. They absolutely adored the fact that I was so, like, expressive with it and boisterous and had all the movements to go with it and was really showing what I was hearing and translating that appropriately for them so they were getting the same 
tone, the same enthusiasm that the speaker had, the same somberness that the speaker had, whatever, right? They were getting a true translation. I absolutely loved being an interpreter. I did it for many, many, many years. I had to stop once I became a nurse just because my schedule no longer allowed it. I was not able, I was working nights when I first started and I was not able to just drop things, you know, and go and um, interpret for people like I used to be able to. So I had to stop doing it all the time, but I did use it in the hospital for all these years if I ever had a deaf patient, which does occur more frequently than I think I ever thought it would <laughs> when I first started nursing. And so it's been handy to have. And now, now in this time of my life, I have healed, I think, pretty much almost completely that part of me that's scared, that doesn't think anyone wants to hear what I have to say by having this podcast. The amount of support, love, and encouragement I get from my listeners to continue and that they absolutely love what I am putting out, that they have learned so much and they can't wait to do more. So many listeners and clients love how much detail I put into things and how much I am able to dive deep and see things that they can't below the surface, right? They love my perspective and my ability to shift and change theirs. And let me tell you, if you can't tell, my inner child is crying, y'all, and it's crying now. <laughs> Tears of joy for being wanted and understood. Tears of sadness for what should have been, right? Tears of anger at many times at my family for discouraging me and yelling at me to be quiet. And I don't think unless you've been there that you understand how harmful it is to a child to hear that their voice doesn't matter. What they have to say doesn't matter. To not listen to them, to tell them that they're they're too much for wanting to talk all the time, that they're too much for talking with their hands. Like, I don't think people understand how much that, like, literally cuts you to the core. Like, someone has stabbed you in the heart with a knife and then twisted it repeatedly. So over the years of having this podcast and having my business and using my voice more, my voice has grown stronger. That's really what has happened in these years of healing. My voice has grown much stronger and I have talked about the hard things in my life, right? You've heard it on the podcast. You've heard it in other things that you've come to that I have spoken at. I have shared all the scary and traumatic stories that have happened. I have helped others find their voice to own their own power. And when I started healing this wound inside of me, I noticed that that's when so much changed in my world. I've been really, really working on it the last three years, four years, somewhere in there. And that's when, like, my business started growing a lot. My podcast has grown a lot. My husband and I grew closer because I wasn't afraid to just, like, tell him the things that I needed to say and that I knew that, you know, that even if he didn't want to hear them at that moment in time, he would listen and he would receive it and then he would take his time to respond and I didn't have to worry about him lashing out in anger at me like my family did. My kids and I have 100% developed a better understanding of each other and a deeper love because they've been able to use their voices with me as well. Uh, we don't do any of that like, oh my god, you back talked and you spoke back to me in our house. Everybody gets an equal voice in our house. Everybody can say what they need to say. Obviously, we need to be, you know, respectful about it and not be assholes to each other. There's a way to say things, you know, and we've taught them that, that there's a way to get your point across without intentionally harming the other person right in the process. And it took a little bit to learn that. Let's be honest. You know, kids can be savages. They really can. But because we've cultivated that in our house of it's okay to use your voice, it's okay to have a say in this, that you can discuss anything with us and that we'll sit and listen and there's no judgment and they're not going to be punished for, you know, speaking up. It's amazing the relationship that we have with our kids that's so different from so many other people that we know. They feel safe to tell us anything and trust me when I tell you, they tell me anything and everything they do. And some of it is stuff you're going, hmm, did I really want to know that? 
The answer is usually no, but I'm glad that they feel safe to come and tell me, and I will never discourage that. Also, using my voice and just speaking up and saying the things sometimes that were a little harder to hear actually help my clients heal faster and make greater leaps. And this has been one of the greatest things that I have ever, ever done for myself. And I implore you to do the same. Discover where your Chiron is and then how you can shape shift that perspective of that wound. Learn to transmute it and transform that wound, right, into something better and understand that there is a purpose to it and is the best thing that you can do to heal on a cosmic level. Other symbols we see, we see the demigod Chiron, hence the name uh, of the asteroid, comet slash planetoid. He was a half man, half horse, so a centaur. It was like basically is the main symbol of Chiron. He was born of Cronus, also known as Saturn, with a nymph named uh, Philyra. He ended up being a really wise being, a healer, as well as a teacher to humanity. He was the father of all other centaurs. In a very shortened version of his tale, Hercules, during his travels around the mountain that Chiron lived in, attended a party with some of the other centaurs that also lived there. Things got out of control. Hercules started shooting them all with poison-tipped arrows. He hit Chiron in the ankle during this. Since Chiron was immortal, he didn't die, but it caused him great agony for the rest of his life. Eventually, he got so tired of being unable to heal it himself that he willingly shed his immortality to go to the underworld. And he did so on the condition that Prometheus would be released from his punishment and returned to the Earth. So he would go to the underworld and willingly give up living on the Earth as long as Prometheus would be released from his eternal punishment and sent back to the Earth. So in this way, we see Chiron in the birth chart, not only signaling the sacred wound, but the medical arts in general, and also bearing a strong relationship to Asclepius, there we go, the patron saint of the healing arts. He actually exceeded Chiron in his healing abilities because he was born of Apollo, the god of healing. In this, then, we also see the need to, quote unquote, die in some way for that wound to be healed following along with how Chiron, right, had to descend into the underworld to be healed of his wound. It is only by letting go that we can be whole once more. So we need to find some way to die to that. Like, I had to literally die to the belief that nobody wanted to hear me, that I wasn't good enough, that my knowledge would never be good enough, that I was never going to be smart enough for it, that my voice didn't matter, and that nobody wanted to hear it. When I died to the belief that my voice didn't matter and nobody gave a fuck about it, it literally like transformed everything and I came back a completely different person, right? It's been years of practice of doing this because uh, it's, not, it's not easy right off the bat, right? I, don't, I wouldn't expect it to be, but it's, uh, it's been necessary. It's been transformative and everybody in my life is better for it. And the same will be for you, too. Moving on to the glyph. The glyph for Chiron is a key. And this symbolizes his ability to unlock the mysteries of our being in the universe as a whole. So if you're looking at your chart, you want to look for the little key. It looks like a skeleton key. And uh, that will be where your Chiron is. Mine is in Gemini in my 11th house. Which makes it even harder because it's not only do I think people don't want to hear my voice I also don't think anybody wants to be in a relationship with me and like a friendship a business relationship I always find it for the longest time I was always really surprised when people were like oh my god I love your business or hey I'd really like to be your friend because I was like why <laughs> so which house sits in too can also add to that wound uh, it's taken me a long time to realize that People do want to actually be my friends and there's not anything underlying that outside of just they want to be friends, right? Like there's no underlying like thing that they're trying to do. And so that's uh, that also can add to that wound. So find the house that it's in and then that'll also help with the healing part too. Um, 
it worked really well for me. The more I networked and formed business relationships, that some of them have turned into very personal friendships as well, the more that also healed. Because I was like, oh, you know, people do actually want to be my friend for no reason other than they just actually like me. Go figure. All right, as far as rulerships, as I mentioned briefly earlier, Chiron rules the bridge between the seen and the unseen realms. So we see it ruling over the spiritual and the psyche as well as the physical body, right? So we see that if our vital force does not reach the outer and visible planets, we will then be forever stuck and bound by Saturn and the limits and boundaries of physical existence. We will only ever then see our own limitations and we won't ever be able to grow and expand as a human being. So to break free of those limitations, we must reach Uranus. We must traverse the darkness to find the light of Uranus. But to do that, we kind of need like a guiding light, right? Or a flashlight so we can make it. And that guiding light is Chiron. The only way to access that bridge in the guide that is Chiron is to consciously work on healing our sacred wound. And then we will make it to the other side where we learn to break free of limitations and societal expectations and we expand and grow and then we use all that knowledge that we get to hit pluto right and to die to what we thought that we needed to be completely and come back from the ashes anew as the person that we are meant to be at that moment so it's kind of a really cool symbolization there too this bridge is that is ruled over by Chiron is a very important point in one's natal chart from both the medical perspective and an evolutionary one because he bridges the inner and the outer, the unseen and the seen and the mystical and the practical. And so it really shows us how we can combine all of those together to enact healing on so many different levels, which is why I really like using Chiron in my readings. So how I use Chiron in a natal chart specifically is I will go look for where Chiron is, what sign it's in, what house it's in, right? Just for general knowledge upon the start of a reading. As the reading progresses, as I move through like my little way of doing things, it will become obvious that the problem they are dealing with is more in the unseen realm and then affecting the physical. If I see that, then I dive deeper into their Chiron placement. Not all Chiron placements are currently causing dis-ease and illness, and it's up to me and what I'm seeing in the chart to determine whether or not Chiron is even in play in someone's chart at this moment in the time, right? In my own natal chart, my Chiron, as mentioned before, is in Gemini in the 11th house. Growing up, I had strep throat at least three to four times a year. At least I would lose my voice completely for a week or two at a time each round of strep throat and my throat became one of the weakest points in my body. It was always falling to disease. It was always suffering. I had a lot of throat problems. Let me tell you the point at which the strep throat stopped, though, and I had never had another bout was when I started the process of speaking up against my ex for the abuse that they were putting me through. When I went to the authorities and I reported him, and then I testified against him in court. When I refused to back down during the divorce proceedings and let his voice overpower mine like I always had in the past. And two years after the divorce, I had the worst bout of strep throat I had had in like years. And it was again, it happened during the time that I was feeling very disempowered to use my voice. I was stuck in a job that didn't value me, my opinion. I had a micromanaging boss that literally hated me and would not speak to me unless it was absolutely necessary. And usually she would tell someone else that was nearby what she wanted to say and then have them pass it over to me like some kind of weird game of telephone. But she was like the boss. So, I mean, the whole thing was just off. She didn't really care what I had to say she only cared about what she had to say and then I was dealing with issues again with my parents you know and they were again dimming my voice and refusing to hear me I ended up with surgery to remove my tonsils because the constant bouts of like back-to-back -back strep had caused them to grow so huge that I was literally choking on food and liquids because they were they had grown so big that they were almost touching in the back of my throat and they were almost completely blocking my esophagus and esophagus is like when you swallow where your food goes down into your stomach and your liquid and I was just I was miserable and I was very very sick because I couldn't hardly eat anything because everything had to be like 
baby food <laughs> consistency to make it through where the tiny little amount of space was left. And on top of that, even liquids were sometimes not going through. And I was hacking up along just trying to drink like water, right? So I had them removed. I did not want to have them removed <laughs> just because I did not want a surgery. But after lots of consultations, talking to people and just kind of doing my own meditations and, you know, coming to an understanding in my body, it was like, yeah, I need to have them removed. And when I finally healed from that surgery, I told myself I was never going to not use my voice again in a way that made me and others feel empowered. And I have 100% followed through with that. And I have not suffered another bout of strep once. No laryngitis, no throat issues constantly like before, uh, no swallowing issues finally. And a lot of people go, oh, it's because you had your tonsils out. But even if you have your tonsils out, you can still get strep throat. You can still get laryngitis. You can still have other issues that come. Even my ear, nose, and throat doctor told me that it's not a, a cure for strep throat, right? But it ended up being a cure for mine because it wasn't just the tonsils that were the issue. It was the energy that was lacking to my throat, right? And I started my podcast, right? And I started really embracing my witchy and woo self, the modality that I use, the medical astrology tools, all of that, right? And my voice has really become stronger than ever. So I have turned what used to be my greatest weakness into my greatest strength. And I want for you to be able to do the same. So ways to balance Chiron in your chart then. The best way to balance Chiron is to first acknowledge where your greatest weak spot is, and then do that by finding Chiron in your natal chart, write down the house and sign that it's in, and do your research on what that means for you, what that means for what the greatest wound can be. Then really sit and meditate on it, journal, whatever it takes, and determine if that area that was mentioned is something that you really find is your weak spot, right? And once you know what your weak spot is and what area of the body it is focused on, find the planet that rules that body system and increase its influence in your life. This can be done by drinking the herbs that are associated with that planet, by working with any of the deities that are associated with that planet, giving offerings to them, doing rituals or spells to bring more of their influence to you. And working on healing that area of your body via nutrition, right? Lifestyle changes, mindset changes, and spiritual up levelings. And if all of that is like super overwhelming for you to figure out on your own, which I get because it's not easy and I've done it without the knowledge that I have now and kind of stumbling through the dark and it's not easy. So if you feel like, hell, that's just too much. That's fine. Tap into my expertise and my knowledge and my absolute love for making complicated things easy, for distilling it down into small manageable steps, easy to understand language, make it easier altogether. Right? This is literally my zone of genius. So I love doing this. I would love to do it for you. So you can head over to my website, atlastrology.com. Go book yourself a medical astrology reading for yourself or a loved one. Or hell, do the whole family. If you do the whole family, I will definitely give you a discount, y'all. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything else you want to mention, reach out to me at info at atlastrology.com and let's chat. I've had several people do that recently and I really appreciate it. So if you're listening, thank you. I really appreciate the feedback and the just reaching out to say, hey, I love your podcast because it makes me super happy. And also it heals more of that, that wound that I have. So I love responding to, and I'll respond to every single one of them. So if you send me a message, unless it goes to spam and I don't see it right away, I will respond. And so I'd love to get to know you guys better. Remember also to like, subscribe, follow, leave a five-star pod review on the podcast so you don't miss a single episode, and then others can find me as well and learn just as much. And if you haven't already, join the dark side, the members-only side of the podcast, so you do not miss out on the awesome episodes that are coming out just for the members. I have already started a series in there. It's all about prenatal, intranatal, and postnatal holistic care that details how I work with my and help my pregnancy clients and help them have happy, healthy pregnancies and births and postpartum transitions. It's one of my favorite, favorite things of what I do. And I want to share it with all of you. So I will also be releasing birth stories shared with me from other individuals who have gone through pregnancy and delivery without support and the outcomes that they have dealt with from that. So if that's something that you 
have experience with and you want to listen, come join the podcast subscription. You can join at the link in the show notes and it's only $4.99 a month, US dollars. And that is it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you can see together how Chiron can work with the planets and help enact healing in your body. If you have any questions, as I said, reach out to me and we will chat. And if you haven't, join the Astro Connection community because I'm in there often and we can chat in there too. Also in the show notes. I will talk to you guys later. Until next time, love and light. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health. I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I enjoyed making it. You can find all relevant links to today's show in the show notes below. If you loved the show today, please subscribe, follow, and leave me a review. I love to hear your thoughts and it helps me know what is a hit and to make more of that content, especially for you. If you want to learn more about me and how I can help you, head over to atlaastrology.com. There you can sign up for a medical astrology package, download my free sun sign in your health ebook, read the blog, and so much more. If you want to connect more outside the podcast, follow my Instagram channel at Atla Astrology or join my Astro Connection community, the link to which you can find in the show notes. Until next time, love and light.